Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to talk about the address resolution protocol. That's commonly referred to as ARP. And so let's jump right into it and first discuss the purpose of this protocol. What does it do for us? Well, quite simply, ARP enables a device to learn the Ethernet MAC address of another device on the same LAN segment. So if you have two PCs and one wants to send a frame to another, you know that inside that Ethernet frame, there is a destination MAC address field. And so you need to put a destination MAC address in there. And if you don't know it, you need to learn it. And that, quite simply, is the purpose of ARP. So it's a pretty simple concept. Um, let's go ahead now and actually take a look at an example, the actual process of how um, a device learns other devices' MAC addresses. And then we'll go ahead and touch upon the ARP cache and see how that relates to all of this. So here's our sample network. We've got a router and a switch and four PCs hanging off of it. And for this example, let's say PC1, whose IP address and MAC address we see, wants to send a packet to PC2. And we can also see the IP and MAC address there for PC2. So first, PC1 is going to check to see if it knows the MAC address of PC2. And for our example, let's say it doesn't know it. So then it needs to employ ARP in order to figure it out, in order to learn it. So the first thing PC1 does is it's going to source a packet, a broadcast packet, and send it onto the network. And by definition, a broadcast is going to be sent to all devices on a particular LAN segment, all devices in the same subnet. So all four of these PCs will receive that broadcast packet. And the contents of the broadcast, the ARP broadcast, is pretty simple. Since PC1 wants to know the MAC address of PC2, and it already knows the IP address of PC2, the message in the broadcast is this. If you are IP address 10.10.10.5, then tell me what your MAC address is. So the key here is PC1 at least has to know something about the destination, and that something is usually the IP address of the destination device. So as long as it knows the address, the IP address, it can use ARP in order to figure out the MAC address. Okay, and so now that's a broadcast message sent to everybody. So these other two PCs, even though we didn't list their IP information, we know that IPs are unique. So here on this network, neither of them owns the same IP address as PC2. So although they receive the broadcast and they process it, they actually look at it and read the contents, they know that it doesn't actually apply to them. The actual ARP request itself isn't for them, so then they ignore it. They don't actually reply to the broadcast. Since PC2 is online and it actually received the broadcast and it says, yeah, I'm 10.10.10.5, I'm .10 okay, I'll respond to you. So then PC2 will actually create, create a reply and send it on the network, but it's not broadcast to everybody. It's only sent to PC1. Okay, so as Whereas this started off with an ARP broadcast to everybody by PC1, the reply is only sent back to PC1 from PC2. And in there it says, yeah, I am this. I am the IP address you mentioned, 10.10.5, and this is my MAC address. And here it is, 3456 CDCD 4321, for example. Now PC1 knows PC2's MAC address. It can go ahead, create the Ethernet frame, put the destination MAC address of PC2 in there, and finally send the frame onto the network, and PC2 will receive it. So that's the overall process. It's very simple. There's a broadcast, and then only the, only the device that actually has the IP that is mentioned in the broadcast will reply. And so if you go back to the very first step I mentioned, PC1, checking locally to see if it has the MAC address of PC2, well, that introduces the concept of the ARP cache. And most devices that um, are capable of routing, so that have some concept of layer three IP addresses and MAC addresses, will have an ARP cache. And the ARP cache is really just for efficiency. What it does is it stores all of the known IP and MAC address combinations of all of the other devices on the same LAN segment. So PC1 can have an ARP cache that says, well, now it'll say, after learning PC2s, 10.10.10.5, okay, that corresponds with this MAC address. And so each device will keep that locally. The router can have it. Even the switch can have it if it's a layer three switch. And all the PCs will keep that ARP cache as well. 
So first they look there, and if they know it, then great. They don't need to send out a, a broadcast. They don't need to create that unnecessary traffic, and it's just a more efficient way of doing things. Keep in mind the ARP cache is a dynamic collection, so if there's a device that it, it ha a particular device hasn't been heard from for a while or you haven't sent anything to it, there's a concept of a timer with the ARP cache which will be used to expire the old or unused addresses. So it's always kept up to date. And if for some reason you need to use a MAC address that you know, you've expired and is now gone, well then you just go ahead and use ARP again in order to relearn it and to repopulate your ARP cache. Okay, so let's actually just take a quick look on my PC here of what an ARP cache will look like. Um, my home PC here is running Windows 7, and so the command I would want to issue in order to look at the ARP cache is this ARP-A, and that'll show you here that it knows of one IP address, and it tells me the corresponding physical address, the MAC address, of that IP address. And it learned it dynamically, so it used ARP in order to learn that information. Um, you can go ahead and configure uh, static addresses on devices where you, you lock in, so to speak, the IP address in the MAC address, but here it was learned dynamically. Um, if you're running Linux, uh, try the command ARP. I don't think you need the flag, da uh, the flag A on there, um, so give that a try as well. And there you have it. That is the ARP protocol. Thanks for watching.